Hi guys. So today we will be discussing your first chapter in chemistry that is matter in our surroundings. Surroundings, as you know, is our environment. Anything that is around us is our surrounding. More importantly, we are going to focus on this particular word that is matter. So the key points that we are going to discuss today are the definition of matter. What is matter? The nature of matter. What is it made of? And properties. What are its properties? So we will begin by discussing the first topic for today. That is the definition of matter. Now, when you look around you, you see so many things. For example, right now you can see this white board. You can see words written here with red ink you can see this duster you can see this marker pen you can see me the chair etc around you can see animals trees stone air water etc 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 all these dear friends is nothing but matter so in short everything around us is matter everything whatever we see around us is matter the question is what exactly is matter how do you define it right so now let us look at this duster for example okay this duster has a particular shape rectangular shape so that is its physical nature physical property what you are able to see other than that you can also feel that it has some amount of mass right so it has a shape and it has mass now when i talk about shape which means if i were to place it over here it would occupy a certain amount of space or area mathematically we can call it as volume so now pay attention duster is matter it occupies space and it also has mass so now for something to be called matter it should have two things it should have mass okay and it should occupy space or volume right so that is your definition of matter what is matter matter is anything that has mass and that occupies space so that is your definition of matter so if one were to ask you what is matter matter is anything that has mass and that occupies volume or space so that is your definition of matter very easy right now let us talk about the next key point what is its nature what is it made up of what is matter made of right so when we talk about nature for example what is nature nature is not what you see around you not that not in that context but for example if you were to ask me what is the nature of water for example the nature of water is free flow isn't it it moves it flows freely that is its inherent nature for example what is the nature of plant the important visible nature of plant is that it does not move it is fixed to a particular position it is stationary that is its nature for example this just a now so nature when we talk about matter matter has 
two kinds of nature it has one that is visible that is physical nature physical property and one that is inherent to it that is its chemical property so when you talk about nature matter has both physical properties as well as chemical properties right in this lesson we are going to focus only on its physical property we are going to focus only on its physical property physical property in the sense that you can see or that you can feel visible right so we are going to focus only on the physical property of matter that brings us to the next very important question kya hai matter kisse bana hai right so now in the beginning around 300 years back scientists had two views regarding what is matter made up of there were two opposing views one group of scientists they believed that matter is continuous right so the first view is that matter is continuous uh, what do you mean by continuous you may ask me for example without any breaks continuous without any breaks let us assume now you can feel the air around you right i am surrounded by air now imagine now i can cut through air i can move through air right i can move through air freely without any obstruction right now imagine if there were no breaks in the air or the snow break koi jagah nahi hota to kya aap itni aasani se move kar pate nahi so that is what is meant by continuous so by now you would have already understood that this particular view was incorrect so matter is not continuous matter is not made up of continuous substance in fact the second opinion which is now proven to be right matter is particulate in nature so this is right particulate what do you mean by particulate particulate made of particles so for example the air is made up of particles and which automatically means that there should be some amount of breaks or gaps in between these particles which is what allows us to move through air the example that i quoted previously we can move through air freely why because it is not continuous like a block of stone or wood but it is made up of particles so we have a small activity that we can do to show that matter is particulate in nature that is matter is made up of particles so this is a very simple activity that you can do we take a test tube that is and we take some water let us take some water then right so now what we will do is we will mark this level of water over here we will just mark it here right you can see the mark right and so as you know test tube is matter right and the water inside the test tube is also matter because it has certain amount of mass and it occupies volume so what we will do is to this test tube of water using a spatula we are going to add this blue colored powder blue colored crystals this is your copper sulfate 
okay cu so4 so i'm not going to wait i'm just going to add quarter of spoon of copper sulfate like this okay and then using a glass rod glass rod we are going to stir it now observe carefully while we are doing this activity we had water that is matter and then we added a quarter spoon of blue colored copper sulfate crystals and we have to stir it till the time it is completely dissolved in the water okay so now that that you can see it is completely dissolved in water observe the level of water that we have marked has not increased you would expect that when you add something basically when you add the copper sulfate crystal to water you would expect the water level to increase but the water level has not increased why is that that is because what has happened here is the water is made up of small small particles small particles and crystals is also matter that is also made up of small particles the particles of copper sulfate have gotten into the spaces between the water particles for example if let us say you have a is tube of water and let us say this is the initial level and water is made up of water particles okay. right and to that you added your copper sulfate cu so4 the blue colored crystals and you mixed it properly this copper sulfate is also made up of particles now these particles what has happened to them why is the level still the same because the copper sulfate particles they have gotten in between the spaces of water particles so now this is a very simple activity but it tells us so many important points which we will discuss in a short while from now this activity basically proves that matter is particulate in nature matter is made up of particles so that brings us to the next key point that is what are the properties of these particles so now that we know matter is made up of particles we have to discuss the properties of particles so matter is anything that has mass and occupies volume what is matter made up of matter is not continuous it is made up of particles the next question that we have to ask is what is the nature of particles what are the properties of particles right so as you have already seen in this particular activity the first property of particle is very clear particles are very small 
with regards to their size they are very small or they are minute minute very very small they are microscopic as you saw here they were so small that they could get into the spaces between the water particles they are that small so that is the first property of particles they are very small they are not visible to the naked eye they are microscopic very 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 small right now in the same activity in the same activity you observe another thing what is that that is particles because they are not continuous right they have spaces between them isn't it so particles have spaces between them for example let us say this is one particle another particle another particle or if you want to make it closer also you can do that as you will see there are spaces between them and because of that reason only the copper sulfate crystals could get into the in between the spaces why right? because there are spaces so that is the second property of particles particles are small number 1 number 2 particles have spaces between them isn't it right what is the next thing that you can observe for that we have to do another very simple activity to come across the third property of particles okay it's a very simple activity once again we would be needing water okay so we are going to take a test tube of water and then for this activity we would require your ink okay and a dropper this is a very simple activity so okay so observation skills are very very important for a student especially for a student of science so using a dropper i am just going to take blue ink and i am going to add only one drop just a small that's it okay and what do you observe as soon as i added the ink you will see the ink is moving slowly isn't it very slowly it does not stay as it is it is moving slowly and now i'll close this bottle of ink what we will do is we will keep this as it is okay let us say undisturbed okay so we get our very carefully i hope you can see this okay so i'm going to keep this here undisturbed and we do dispose okay so as you can see 
the particles are moving and after some time they will be completely dispersed so with this activity with a very simple activity we come across the third property of matter that is particles are moving they can move right not only that we can see they still continue to move they don't move and stop okay they continue to move so they are continuously moving continuously moving of course this is not always true there are some particles which cannot move continuously which we will discuss in the next class right so for now the third property of matter is particles can move and they are continuously moving as you can see you see so when we talk about movement right for something to move it has to have certain amount of energy isn't it so the energy associated with motion or movement is that of kinetic energy isn't it the energy that is related with motion kinetic energy so we can say that particles possess kinetic energy i have shown it as k e kinetic energy that is energy of movement or energy of motion so these are the three points kinetic energy now there is another important point that you have to pay attention over here just to give you an example for example you want to make a hot cup of tea okay so what do you do you go to the kitchen you take a pan you put water into the pan that's how you do tea and you switch on the gas don't forget to switch on the gas right so uh, you see you have kept the water for boiling in the initial few couple of minutes you don't see much movement in the water pan but slowly after 3 to 4 minutes you see small bubbles they start arising from the bottom of the pan and they come upwards and another few seconds later the number of bubbles increases not only that their movement becomes more faster right bubbles keep coming up like this and their number will increase and another minute or so you see the entire pan is filled with bubbles and that is when i add sugar and then i add after a few seconds i add my tea powder and then i add milk at the end and then i leave it the point here is initially you wouldn't observe the bubbles but after 3 or 4 minutes you see bubbles and then their number increases number of bubbles increases and their movement the frequency of them arising and their speed their movement increases the entire the bubbles come from bottom up like that right so what we learn from this particular example is that definitely particles are moving they have kinetic energy but when temperature increases when temperature increases kinetic energy will also increase in the beginning the pan wouldn't be that hot temperature is less but as it becomes hotter and hotter temperature increases particles also start moving faster because their they gain energy their kinetic energy increases now you see they are moving 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 and if i were to shake this okay swirl it i am increasing the energy and see now i decide to give it a shake isn't it and now it is completely dissolved so when i 
shake it like this what am i doing i'm increasing their kinetic energy when kinetic energy increases their moment also increases let me put this away so that is the third property of matter they are very small they have got spaces between them and these particles are continuously moving the fourth point fourth point is very simple for example let me give you another example uh, when we were small we used to play with water so you have a tap uh, at your homes when we turn the tap on you see a constant and what we used to do we used to put our hands like that across the stream of water in between that of the water so the water is flowing vertically and we put our hands and play like that when we put our hands in between for a brief moment the flow the continuous flow is interrupted and when we take it away once again the water stream is continuous when we put it here it is interrupted and we take the hand out it is continuous isn't it uh, for example you can also take a chalk piece that is available at our schools when you break it okay it is broken into two halves but they are not completely separated if you want to hammer the same chalk piece into a fine powder still the particles are not completely separated these two examples tell us a very important that's the fourth property of particles that is particles they exert a force of attraction on each other particles attract each other so when i put my hand in between the flow of water and then i remove it once again the flow of water is continuous because particles attract each other okay no doubt particles are moving they are continuously moving but they also attract each other and that is our fourth property of matter so particles are very small particles have spaces in between them particles are continuously moving and particles attract each other so these are the four important properties of particles to quickly end the session we have to speak about a very important phenomenon that is connected to this third point particles are continuously moving particles possess kinetic energy this phenomenon is called as diffusion okay phenomenon that we are going to discuss now is diffusion it is very easy very simple for example this is your incense stick or agarbatti that we burn at our homes in your puja room so let us say you take your agarbatti and you light it on the smell travels from the puja room to your dining hall and through that to the living room why does it happen and what is happening what is this phenomenon called this phenomenon is called as diffusion so we have to define diffusion if you were to split this word diffusion into two halves you will get the meaning of diffusion first word diff different okay different fusion fuse come together fusion so different things they come together this is in our own words scientifically diffusion is defined as a phenomenon where two different particles two different particles they mix with each other they mix with each other so let us take this example again 
which are the particles mixing in this particular case. Here the particles of Avermer angel sticks they come out. Why? Because temperature is more, kinetic energy increases because kinetic energy increases, particles will move faster, right? So particles of intrinsic are over here. At the same time, we have air, which is the medium, right? Air also has got particles because air is also matter. So the particles of incense stick they mix with the particles of air. Why? Because air has got spaces in between. These particles will mix. This intermixing of different particles, different particles on their own, on their own is defined as diffusion. So diffusion is nothing but intermixing of different particles on their own. Right? And you would have observed this by now as temperature increases diffusion will increase as temperature increases diffusion will increase for example we have two other vertices one that is not lit that is not burning and another vertice is burning so in these two cases in which case will you observe the smell to travel farther and faster obviously in this case right why because the agarbatti is lit so temperature is higher so kinetic energy is higher particles can travel faster and farther in the other case where the agarbatti is not lit temperature is less the movement of particles is less therefore diffusion is also lesser right so this diffusion is related to the movement of your particles. So that is our end of discussion for today's session. To quickly summarize what we have discussed in this session, beginning we discussed the definition of matter. Now we know that everything around us is matter. Matter has mass and matter occupies volume or space. Matter is made up of particles. Matter is particulate in nature. And then we went on to discuss about the properties of particles. Properties of particles. Particles are very small. Particles have spaces between them. Particles are continuously moving. It is due to their kinetic energy as temperature increases kinetic energy will increase their movement will increase diffusion also increases and particles they attract each other so these are the four properties of matter so i will see you guys in the next session thank you